Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on moving high definition video onto a standard definition DVD. There's a whole lot of different pieces of software that all have to work well to be able to take high def video and down convert it and make it look good on a DVD. The purpose of today is to show you how. The goals for this session are to provide a solid post production workflow that allows you to shoot high def video edit in HD, then deliver your final project in standard def on DVD. Along the way, I'll illustrate how to use Final Cut Pro, Compressor, DVD Studio Pro, DVD Player, and Roxio Toast. One important note before we start. Whenever we say the term DVD, we are always referring to standard def. If you need a high def DVD, then you need to create a Blu-ray disc, and we've already done a session earlier on the creation of Blu-ray discs using Final Cut Studio. DVD Studio Pro always and only creates standard def video. The HD DVD listed in DVD Studio Pro's menus and manuals refers to a format that died two and a half years ago and it's no longer supported anywhere in the market. DVDs and DVD Studio Pro are standard def only. Here's a HD editing mantra that can stand you in good stead. When possible, edit the format you shot. If you need to transcode, and transcode is simply a, a fancy word that means to convert, you want to transcode from a lower quality video format to a higher quality format. And I'll have more on this in a minute. Here's a rule of thumb if you are shooting everything in a single HD format. You want to ingest and edit the video format that you shot. If Final Cut needs to transcode, as it does with AVC HD, then let Final Cut do the transcoding as part of the ingest process and this is most often done using the log and transfer window. One big exception is if you shot H.264. You want to transcode H.264 into something that you can edit much more easily. Final Cut can edit H.264 natively, but when you compare it to ProRes, H.264 requires longer render times, puts limitations on color correction, and displays reduced image quality. My feeling is life is too short to edit H.264 natively. Here's a rule of thumb for multiple format HD video. If you have projects with short deadlines, then bring all your files into Final Cut and let Final Cut transcode them. This saves you time at the beginning, but it requires more render time and doesn't provide the highest image quality. If you have a project that has a longer deadline, then transcode all your media into a common HD format, common format, common codec, common image size, common frame rate before bringing it into Final Cut Pro. It does take longer at the beginning, but this provides you higher image quality, faster renders, and faster output. When it comes time to decide what transcode formats you want to use, it really depends upon what version of Final Cut you're using. If you're running Final Cut Pro 7, I recommend transcoding into ProRes 422 or ProRes 422 LT. The examples in today's exercise are all ProRes 422 LT. Final Cut Pro 6, I recommend ProRes 422, mainly because ProRes 422 LT doesn't exist for Final Cut Pro 6. And if you've got Final Cut Pro 5, transcode into DVC Pro HD. I'm not suggesting that DVC Pro HD has the same quality as ProRes. It's just that Final Cut Pro 5 doesn't support ProRes. DVC Pro HD also is a much easier format for computers to process. It runs better on G3s and G4s and G5s than ProRes does. Also, where possible, shoot and edit a progressive image. The ideal format to shoot is 1080p. Second to that is 720p, and in third place is 1080i. If you're given the choice, progressive is always better. A couple of core concepts with DVD Studio Pro before we get too far down the road. DVD Studio Pro is a wiring application. You're going to do all of your creative work outside the application, then use DVD Studio Pro to hook everything together, which means you're going to spend most of your time in applications other than DVD Studio Pro. Once your assets are created, your menus, your videos, your audio, the process of creating a DVD is relatively fast and easy. I can spend several weeks putting the assets together and have the DVD fully built, tested, and working great in just a few hours. DVD Studio Pro is remarkably efficient at connecting all the pieces. 
the time is spent not in the DVD Studio Pro part, but in getting the assets created in the first place. So here's the basic DVD workflow. In Final Cut, you want to ingest and import all the elements into an HD project and edit it as an HD project. When the edit is complete, set and label DVD chapter markers, and I'll show you how this is done. Then, when all of your editing is done, export your project as a self-contained, high-quality, master HD video. Once you get that master file created, in Compressor, down convert and compress it with modified settings for DVD. Within DVD Studio Pro, you want to import your assets, build your menus and tracks, and link them all together. Then you want to test and output to the underscore TS folders. I don't burn my DVDs in DVD Studio Pro. There's a better way, and for me, that better way is Roxio Toast. In Roxio Toast, I burn the TS folders to DVD because it allows me to change the burn speed to 4x. Never ever burn a DVD at the fastest speed possible. It always injects the most errors. Slowing your burn speed down generates higher quality, more error-free discs. So that is the workflow, and that's what we're going to be doing today. Let's get ourselves started.